The study of the universe spans almost inconceivable extremes of size and distance and time. From the vast island of stars we call a galaxy, to the tiny atom and the particles that comprise it. I was never good at constellations. The study of the universe I wanted to be. spans almost inconceivable the, the night sky is beautiful and, and immense and complicated, and, and I just never had the memory for what was brighter or dimmer or closer to what else. The vast I mean, island of stars we call it galaxy. More or less the same. It was more like memorizing the dictionary than bird watching to me. I feel like you're in the minority there, Andrew. I think a lot of people over I was the never good at constellations. Have been I wanted to be. I tried. Oh, I mean, absolutely. The night sky is beautiful. You know, astronomy and and looking at each star and, and just never had regular memory habits. for it's what was been our species' or great fascination. Or to what else. And naturally, we my vantage point, point degree, all more or less the same on the heavens to see like how memorizing the dictionary stars bird actually today. are. I don't even know I what you're going like to be talking about. I feel like you're in the minority there, Andrew. I think a lot of people over the history of human experience have been very Studying each point of light and comparing its movements, its brightness, its color. You know, astronomy, a diversity. looking at Some each of those stars and following its regular habits, and it's not just our species' great fascination place in the universe. And naturally, we applied a certain degree of measured scrutiny on the heavens to see I'm how varied and fascinating the stars actually, actually are. And this is measure for measure. I don't even know what you're going to be talking about yet, We measure time and geography using the stars, but exciting things that happen when you learn how to measure its movements, its brightness, and its color reveals a real stunning diversity. Some of those stars have incredible stories to tell, and not just about themselves, but about humanity's place in the universe. Can you take us back a little bit? I mean, I know the history of astronomy is little. very long, but I'm Leah you know, where we and start this is measure for measure, using a little show sizing for up sure. Our and and we I first first want to give some credit. geography using the, the ancient stars, Babylonians, things the that Aztecs, the Mayans. The stars there are plenty themselves. of cultures throughout history that have studied the heavens in this way. But at least for our story, we're going to start in the mid 1500s, at about the time Henry VIII was on his very Can you last take us wife. Back a little bit? Polish I mean, astronomer and scholar Nicholas Copernicus. This is the Copernicus, where we start using measurement. For sure. And, and I first want to give some credit. System. The ancient he knew it Babylonians, wasn't be fun the Aztec, the Mayans, pushback. there are plenty of and cultures he had the throughout good history that just have studied before the heavens in this way. But at least for our story, we're going to start in the mid 1500s, at about the time Henry VIII oh, yeah. was no, on he his was very last work wife. For a long time. Polish astronomer and scholar. And he was right. He got plenty of pushback. This is the Copernicus, right? Not just from theologians like Martin Luther. He pitched a sun centered model, but from other astronomers. He knew it wasn't going to be fun. The defenders of the old earth centered model knew that there was no way that he was going to be fun. Before he certain. died. Does that they mean were, that he delayed well, publishing? Yeah, when you, when you look at the scenery go by from your carriage, the lamp post by the street. Oh, yeah. No, he was the sitting on his own. Houses and the churches time. and the fields wow. appear to move slower. And he was and right. He got plenty of distance, barely seemed to move at all. Yes, I often Not just feel from that theologians when I'm like Martin Luther and the Pope, from but from carriage. other astronomers. <laughs> sure. You know, sure. The defenders but from the mindset of these 16th century astronomers, there's no way. You know, they're looking at the stars. And if the Earth was traveling huge distances from one side of the sun, when you look at the scenery go by from your carriage, the lamp post by the street around quickly, the jumping in houses and the churches. And the fields appear to move slower, and the mountains in the far distance barely seem to move at all. Yes, I often feel that when I'm looking but up at the we scenery don't. from my The stars don't move like carriage. that at all. Sure. And it was really sure, solid in the mindset the of these from 16th their vantage century point, astronomers. They see the stars you know, they're looking at the background. stars, and if the Earth was, which those astronomers didn't realize, was that one side of the sun to the other, or actually just much, be able to see the stars moving around like anyone dared to imagine. So they looked like they weren't moving because they were so far away. But we don't. Was really the small. stars don't move like that at all. Yeah, that's a good and way to think really about it. It took 200 the years for from their vantage point, they couldn't enough see the stars see moving in the background. Either side of Earth's orbit, what the those astronomers didn't realize was that even the closest tiny, stars bit. are actually just much, now, much, astronomers much would observe a star away in January than and then check in on it six months later so in June looked like they when the Earth is 300 million kilometers away on the other side of the sun. Comparing the two views from those two vantage points is like kind of Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. It took 200 years for astronomers to create precise enough technology to see that slightly different Either side of Earth's orbit, the stars is what gives us depth perception. perception. A it's tiny, sort of tiny like bit. if you were to put your hand over now, one eye and then would observe a star in January and, and then check in on it six months later in exactly. June. Exactly. When the and Earth that is 300 is million kilometers away parallax. on the other side of the yeah. sun. So compared with the, the televiews from those two some trigonomas, like scientists could finally see how far away the stars actually were by comparing the different images. 
I'm taken from the vantage point of one what side of the Earth compared to the other. It's sort of the stars like weren't just points of light on a celestial eye, bowl or a heavenly ceiling. They discovered that the cosmos had depth. Exactly. Not long after and giving up our seat at the center of the solar system, humans then had to come to terms yeah. with our cosmic so insignificance. So with a telescope with and some trigonometry, precision. scientists could As finally see how far away the stars actually were by comparing the two images taken from the vantage point of one side of the Earth compared to the other. The stars weren't just points of light on a celestial bowl or a heavenly ceiling. They discovered that the, the cosmos so had depth. To the distance, Not long after giving up our seat at the center of the solar system, yeah, we just then had the stars were really, really far away. And if they're that far away, and we're just as the solar system shrinks to one then bright point in the distance, feel like you're our sun is plainly now only one among the stars. This is like um, our cosmic all the insignificance by writing that the space that we take up, even as we're rotating around the sun, I mean, it's the same anxiety compared to the distance. The Pope and Martin Luther had in response to Copernicus. Yeah, we discovered that the stars were really, really far away. We are not. And if they're the that far away, and, and we're just God a small part of it, the most then it to makes us. you feel like you're and that's a real alone bummer, in a very big, empty room. Own this is like um, the most all the sci-fi writing. That's right. If, I mean, we say this metaphorically, but a lot I mean, of us live like the world revolves around us. And we found out that not only does the Earth not revolve around us, but the Earth is revolving around other things, and those other things aren't even that big of a deal. Instruments probe the near and distant environments of Space, and open new Most windows on the universe. That's right. But that parallax technique only we say works this metaphorically, really but a lot of us even live the two like the world vantage revolves points around us. By Earth's and orbit. we found Most out that not only does the too Earth far away to see not the revolve around us, us, but the Earth parallax is revolving gave around other things, feel for the and those other things and aren't even that big of a deal. How far away instruments else probe the near Henrietta Swan Levitt was hired by Harvard University at the turn of the 19th century, just two years before Franklin Delano Roosevelt enrolled in that parallax technique only works with a really close star. Okay, we're talking widest vantage points afforded by Earth's orbit. Most of the stars are just Levitt too far away to see human computer in the astronomy move. department. And Parallax she wasn't really allowed to be a scientist. feel for the cosmic neighborhood. And human human next they wanted to know how far away everything was. Well, she had a bachelor's degree, which Henrietta was already Swan pushing the limit was of hired by Harvard University for a woman at the time. The but century. at the university, just years before a freshman, to use the Franklin Delano Roosevelt enrolled as an undergrad. Okay, we're talking about a lady scientist Men were doing the exciting work while women like her were left to take care of what would be done today with software interns. And she wasn't really allowed to be a scientist. Was put to what work cataloging boxes of photographic plates of well, stars. Well, she had a bachelor's degree, which was already pushing the limits of acceptable levels of education for women dots. at the time. But you know, at the university, with that women level weren't allowed to use the telescope because it was too serious. You're a little serious bit of a big picture thinker. Almost for that certainly, kind of level men were doing the exciting work. Yeah, well, I want to think about the grandness of the universe, not squinting at the little pages. Henrietta Swan Leavitt was put to work cataloging boxes of photographic plates of stars. Just two hundred. I wouldn't have made it. You would have been a telescope only. I would have been telescope only. You know, categorizing with that level of detail is an actual nightmare. Really interesting. A bit of a big While she was acting the part of stellar kind of librarian, of she noticed a relationship that yeah, I want to think about the grandness of the Humans universe. Humans have known for centuries that some stars get brighter, get brighter and little pages, like a steady okay, so cosmic heartbeat. Okay, so were heartbeat. you in Henrietta? Polaris, the North Star, isn't as steadfast as I thought. It's one of those heartbeat stars. I wouldn't have made it, and it pulses every four days or so. I would have been telescope only. But in that tedious work, Levitt noticed something. A really further. interesting. Sure. While she well, was acting the, the star part of will, will grow in she intensity for a couple of days, no one else had before. Dimmer over the Humans have known for days, centuries that some stars get brighter and dimmer, brighter and dimmer, like a and dimmer over heartbeat. time. Sort of pulsing. Polaris, the North Star, pulsing. isn't yeah. as steadfast as some of them thought. pulse faster than others. Heartbeat stars. What and Levitt noticed was that four days for those so. nearby That's heartbeat really stars whose distance from Earth had star. been measured with the <laughs> parallax just, method, describe that a little she noticed bit that the faster sure, the stars, well, heart the star will, will grow in intensity for a couple of so days, and then it'll get dimmer over the next couple of days. And it'll just sort of cycle brighter and dimmer, dimmer over star. time. Sort of so pulsing. this might sound it's trivial, pulsing, but yeah. if you imagine and some of them pulse faster than others. Maybe you look out your window at night and you see two little lights on your window. For those nearby heartbeat stars, which one is a firefly on the glass and which is a parallax truck headlight? Until maybe one of them starts the stars blinking heartbeat. in a particular pattern the brighter that makes you shine that it's a tiny insect. So a fast pulse in the same way, Levitt's work meant that you could point your telescope at a tiny little distant beating star, star. measure its so pulse, this and might sound trivial, but shines. if you imagine, and then compare, maybe you look out your window at night and you see two little on lights on your window. And that it's way hard you can figure out how far away which one is a firefly wait, wait, on the glass I, and which is a distant truck headlight until maybe one of them starts blinking in a particular pattern. So in the same way that I get really confused when I look up at the stars and some of them are bright and some of them are dim, Levitt's work meant that you could point your telescope at a tiny little a distant star, star that's far away, measure its and pulse to a really figure dim out how star that's close up. And then they're all just kind of a jumbled mess. But if one of them is blinking, 
And that and way it's blinking you can in a way that means it that it must wait, wait, be really, I, really, I'm not really bright. The connection but here on Earth, yet. it still looks dim. So in the same that way that it's gotta I be get really, really confused away. when I look up at the stars, and, today that's and as some of them are bright and some of them are dim, you can't the, really the tell the difference between a really bright, bright, bright star that's far away immediately and a really saw the value dim star that's relationship of those. They're all just kind of a jumbled mess. And they started using it as one of them is blinking and it's blinking in a way that means that it must be really, really, really brightness. But here on Earth, it still looks dim. That means it's gotta be like a map of lighthouses pulsing and today that's known as Levitt's Law. Normal but quite unfamiliar, stars the, and the clouds of gas surround us. And how bright it As we traverse the Milky Way galaxy. astronomers saw the value of that Standard relationship of those heartbeat stars, and they started like using them as a benchmark for comparing Well, no, because it's comparing the, the intensity of the star in space of to the amount of light can be used to compare distances around, around the galaxy, like, unit like a map of lighthouses pulsing in the dark. Normal but okay, quite okay. unfamiliar and, stars uh, and clouds of gas surround us as we traverse the Milky Way galaxy. She was functionally a candle, and then she got a it's literally like named after her for astronomy. astronomy. Well, no, Did because it's comparing Fanny the Glory? intensity of the star. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Henry Swan Levitt? Light given off by a candle. <laughs> a candle is like a unit. Science has of always light. been a team effort. Oh, wow. Behind every okay. big name scientist, cool. there are almost okay, okay. always a team of very talented people working in the background. And a lot of those people have been women, and a lot of those people have been forgotten. Functionally a human being. Just a few short years, the universe got a whole lot bigger. Levitt expanded the rulers that astronomers used to measure glory? the distances to the stars from. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Henry Levitt? I have not. Oh, actually, you know, I've, got, I've got a, a question. Effort. Can I put you on the Behind spot for every big name scientist? Do you, do you know what a light year is? Always a team of very Again, talented people based on having read a decent and a lot of the, of those people have been women, and a lot of those people have been forgotten. In just a few short years, the universe got a whole lot bigger. Levitt expanded the ruler that astronomers used to measure the distances to the stars from. Really close. Hundreds of light years. We're really close. That is kind of you. Oh, actually, you know, a light I've got, year I've got a is a measure of spot distance. For it's do you, how do you know far what a light year will is? get over the Again, course of one year. Again, based on having read a decent so, amount of yeah, sci-fi, I can say with exactly. a zero okay. amount of confidence so a light year is, uh, that a light, I mean, light year is really the crazy amount fast. of time it's it takes three for times light 10 to travel across space. Power meters per second. We're really close. Which is like, how we're really close. How do you know that? kind of you. I took physics in high school. But a light year is a measure of distance. It's how far light will get over the course of one year. So light is just crazy fast. And if you can imagine the incredible incredible yeah, distance that light inverse. can go in exactly. a whole year. Okay. Just, so just a to, light to year is help you visualize I mean, light is really it crazy takes fast. Close to a half three times hour ten to the for a radio meters signal per second, traveling at the speed which of light. Like, how do you know that off of the top Mars. of your head? And that's just within our own solar system. I took physics in high school. I did not retain that level of information. So light is just crazy fast. And if you can imagine the incredible distance that light can go in a whole year, just just to help you visualize stuff, it takes close to a half hour for a radio signal, which is traveling at the speed of light to go from Earth years. to Mars. And that's just within so our own solar system. Do we have and on Earth experience? There is no distance slow, that you like can go on planet that Earth that is far I know enough you can away watch stars that in the you will night notice sky the speed that of are like exploding which is or whatever. Wild. So it's but it actually strong already no. happened. It's a strong no. Using Levitt's years, law and right. the heartbeat stars, that astronomers that learned that our own years. sun is on the unremarkable <laughs> outskirts of a vast pinwheel-shaped cluster of billions there is of stars. No distance that you can go on planet Earth that is That's far right. enough away. That and as if that weren't enough, heartbeat stars were then found in fuzzy little dots that turned out to not only be stars but huge clouds of Using Levitt's law and stars the in whole stars. galaxies of their own, learned that our own millions of light years outside of our own Milky Way, pinwheel-shaped like cluster of billions of, of stars, of the Milky Way galaxy. We are within the Milky Way. Boxes. That's right. That when I didn't know that. Things like galaxies. I'm <laughs> and as if that weren't enough, heartbeat stars were then found in fuzzy little dots that turned out to not only be stars but huge clouds of billions more stars in whole galaxies. There was just so much more than our own galaxy outside of our own Milky Way. Any of it either. This lonely scene, the galaxies like dust, is what most of space looks like. This emptiness is normal. The richness of our own neighborhood is the exception. Levitt died of cancer at the age of 53. Cool. All right. She lost her hearing in her 30s. There was just so much was more than our own gallery health. And, and we weren't close to the center of any I of really it. wish she could have been a part of what This came lonely after. scene, because the, work of the galaxies the like dust, over. the heartbeat is what stars most that Levitt space identified looks like. allowed scientists to plumb this the depths 1,000 times deeper into the richness space. of our own neighborhood. Today, scientists use what's called the cosmic distance ladder as a Levitt hierarchy died of cancer progressively longer measuring sticks. She lost her hearing in her 30s, and her work was constantly interrupted by ill health. I know, I love that. 
that right? Yeah. I really wish the stars closest been a part to us in after. our corner of the galaxy because the work of measuring the universe products. wasn't over. Then the using heartbeat stars that Levitt identified with stars within our galaxy plumbed the depths and even galaxies closer into space. When the light is so far away that the barely perceptible by the time it arrives on Earth, of progressively longer measuring sticks for probing further and further into space. Supernovae, or if it's really, really, really far away, you'll have to observe red stars closest to us in our corner of the galaxy can be measured with parallax. Physics for using Levitt's law to measure with stars within our galaxy and even galaxies but closest I guess to what I'm hearing is When the light originates Levitt's so far away that it's barely perceptible by the time it arrives here on Earth, you have to dip into the tully fissure relation or type 1a supernovae, or if it's really, 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 really far away, you'll have to observe red shifts with Hubble's law, but that's some dense physics for a different podcast. You know it's bad when they get into a number letter combination, but I guess what I'm hearing is that Levitt's law Yeah, the star ladder is exists because we can measure close in distances with one technique, but then we get into distances that are so far away that we have to find another another yardstick that's even longer to measure those middle distances. And what I love about this story is that an amazing insight was discovered by someone who was paid to stay out of the way and not to think too hard. And the thing that keeps the star ladder is 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 exists because we can measure to measure close in distances with one technique, but then we get into distances that are so far away that we have to find another or exactly another yardstick that's even but longer to measure those very middle distances. And as we're exploring the universe, we're exploring the limits of our own amazing insight was discovered by someone who has been paid to stay out of the way and not to think too human comprehension. And the thing that keeps bringing me back to the story is what it says about scale. There are ways to measure distance at one scale, make that at a certain point what those numbers mean. We've measuring distances near and far are exactly the same as measuring far, the maximum but in distance that can be measured very, very in the universe. As we're exploring the universe, we can now we're measuring the depth of space with incredible capacity to perceive. But in many ways, space, I think, still remains unfathomable. It's a scale beyond human comprehension. Our brains just didn't evolve to process that many zeros. But even where we haven't been able to internalize or make personal what those numbers and mean, that's a wrap, folks. This, this is Measure for Measure, a limited series from the Ministry of Ideas. The, the show's executive produced by Lee Measure, created by me, Andrew Middleton, and sound engineer now measure the depth of space with incredible music is by precision. Siraj Sindhu and But in many ways, it still remains always to Zachary Davis for support. If you enjoyed this podcast, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. You can learn more on our website, ministryofideas.org slash measure, or find us on Twitter at Measure 4 m And that's a wrap, folks. This is Measure for Measure, a limited series from the Ministry of Ideas. You can show email us at Measure for Measure created by me, Andrew Middleton, and sound engineer by Craig Friedel. Our music is by Suraj Sindhu and Mackenzie Kugel. Thanks as always to Zachary Davis for support. If you enjoyed this podcast, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. You can learn more on our website, ministryofideas.org slash measure, or find us on Twitter at Measure 4M and Instagram at Measure 4 Measure Pod. That's with the number four. You can also email us at Measure 4 Measure Pod at gmail.com. That's Measure 4 Measure with the number four. Thanks for listening. Made me dream by the light of the stars By the light of the stars You're